Hello everybody, I'm Eoland, and this is an LOD dungeon guide for the revamped Zul'Gurab 5-man heroic instance. Today we'll be covering all the details needed to make your dungeon run a success. If you wish to see other boss guides, make sure to visit our YouTube channel as well as our blog for more information. Overall, Zul'Gurub is a step up in difficulty compared to other Cataclysm Heroics. It's very important to acquire gear from the other Heroics before attempting ZG in order to limit any potential gear-related issues. The first boss within the instance is High Priest Phenoxus. At first glance, the Venoxus encounter may seem complicated or confusing due to all the visual effects. However, the strategy for the boss is fairly simple. Your tank will want to pull Venoxus off of his platform to the center of the room. After engaging him, he will cast Word of Hethys and poison lines will begin to form a maze shape on the floor. If you stand in this poison, you will take a high amount of damage to try to avoid it. One of his main abilities is called Whispers of Hethys. This ability is a channeled poison spit that should be interrupted as soon as possible. Otherwise, the target of the poison will take massive damage and put undue stress on your healer. Venoxus will also cast a toxic link between two players. The closer the players are to each other, the more damage they will take. To break this link, players simply need to move away from each other until it disappears. The only issue involved in removing the link is the fact that the poison maze is still on the floor. Therefore, it's crucial for your ranged DPS and your healer to spread out initially to make breaking the link easier. Once Venoxus reaches 75% health, he will transform into a snake and gain new abilities. One ability that will greatly affect your tank and any melee DPS is called Blessing of the Snake God. This ability lasts for one and a half minutes and will cause pools of poison to spawn under the boss. It's important for your tank to move the boss out of these pools immediately and for melee DPS to avoid standing in them. Also during this phase, Venoxus will cast Breath of Hethys. The Breath is a two second cast that will deal a lot of damage to anyone standing in front of the boss. Your tank can avoid this ability by moving behind the boss as soon as the cast begins. Other party members also need to be aware of which direction the boss is facing as they can be hit by the Breath. At around 35%, Venoxus will return to his platform and cast Blood Venom. This ability will spawn beams that will target random players. Simply do your best to kite the beams around, making sure, as always, to avoid running into the poison lines of the maze. After 10 or so seconds of Blood Venom, Venoxus will gain the Exhausted debuff. This debuff causes him to take 100% more damage. Save all of your big DPS cooldowns for this phase. If Venoxus is not dead by the time the Exhausted debuff wears off, he will simply repeat the previous phases of the fight until he is defeated. The second boss encounter is Bloodlord Mandukir. This fight is fairly straightforward and is very similar to the original raid encounter. There are eight chain spirits around the room that will resurrect any party member after they die. Like the original encounter, each death will cause Mandukir to level up, increasing the damage he deals by stacking 20%. Mandukir will start the encounter mounted on his raptor. Every now and then, he will charge at a random group member and cast Decapitate, an ability that will effectively one-shot you. After being killed by Decapitate, a Chained Ghost will offer to resurrect a player. Upon taking this res, the player will gain a 25% buff to any damage or healing they do, but it will also increase the damage they take by 10%. When Mandukir reaches about 80% health, or roughly 20 seconds into the encounter, he will dismount from his Raptor. The Raptor will charge toward one of the remaining spirits. If the Raptor is allowed to reach a spirit, it will kill it instantly. If you don't feel your group has the DPS to defeat Mandakir before you run out of spirits, you will have to switch all DPS to the Raptor as soon as possible. Also, be prepared to kill the Raptor again as he will be resurrected throughout the fight. Another ability of Bloodlord Mandakir is called Devastating Slam. This is a two second channeled ability that causes Mandakir to leap into the air, dealing a lot of damage in a frontal cone. This ability is fairly easy to avoid, as there is a really obvious animation that appears in front of the boss that will show where the slam will occur. Simply move out of this area as soon as possible. During this phase, Mandakir will cast an ability called Bloodletting. Bloodletting drains 50% of the target's current health every 2 seconds and will heal Mandakir for 50% of the damage dealt. Similar to Anubarak from TOC, this ability has a limit of 2500 damage dealt per tick. Healers should keep the target above 2500 health, but not heal them too much in order to minimize the amount of healing that the boss receives. 
At 20%, Mandicure goes into a frenzy, increasing his damage done and also the frequency with which he will decapitate players. His frenzy acts as a soft enrage, so make sure you save all DPS, tanking, and healing cooldowns for this phase. If you do not defeat him quickly enough after all your spirits have been used, he will swiftly pick off your party members and easily cause a wipe. The next boss you will encounter is High Priestess Kilnara. High Priestess Kilnara is known as the Panther boss and is most likely the toughest boss in this dungeon. This fight revolves around your party's ability to keep Panther ads under control and may easily stress your healers. The Priestess herself does limited damage in the form of Shadow Bolts. She also has an ability called Wave of Agony. Wave of Agony appears as a frontal cone and can easily be avoided. If hit by Wave of Agony, players will be knocked back and take 70 to 80,000 damage. Another cast she does is called Tears of Blood. Tears of Blood deals 8.5 to 11.5 thousand damage to all players. The Tears of Blood cast should be interrupted whenever possible. Inside Kilnara's room are groups of panthers sleeping in packs of four. These panthers, when pulled, will leap onto random targets leaving a nasty bleed debuff. Panthers can be pulled in groups of two if you feel your healer will have trouble dealing with too many bleed debuffs on the party. It is very important to avoid damaging the boss until all the panthers in the room have been dealt with. Once the boss reaches 50%, she will change into her panther form. If you have not killed all panthers in the room by this point, they will all become active and attack your group. Kilnara will gain a haste buff that will also considerably increase tank damage. Also during this phase, Kilnara herself will randomly leap at players, leaving a bleed debuff the same way her panthers did earlier in the fight. If you killed all the panthers in her room prior to this phase, the fight becomes considerably easier and is a basic tank and spank until her death. The next major boss is Zanzil. Zanzil only has two main abilities that remain active over the course of the entire fight. The first ability is a Shadow Bolt cast that should be interrupted or spell reflected, otherwise it will deal around 40,000 damage to the target. The second ability is called Zanzili Fire and will place a trail of fire under the tank that leads in a random direction. This fire is easy enough to deal with by the tank moving the boss away from it. DPS and healers should just avoid standing in it. Zanzil has three other abilities that are randomly cast during the fight. Each ability has a color association. Depending on which ability is cast, players will have to drink from one of the cauldrons located around the room. One ability is the Resurrection Elixir. Zanzil will resurrect a Berserker. The Berserker will focus on one party member and move slowly towards them. The player targeted should run away from the ad. If the ad catches up to you, it will easily kill you. This ability requires the use of the blue Frostburn Formula Cauldron. Players should drink from the Frostburn Cauldron to gain the buff that allows them to freeze attackers. All DPS, after drinking from the Cauldron, should kill the Berserker as quickly as possible. Another ability is Zanzil's Zombie Resurrection Elixir. This is the red-colored ability. The Elixir will resurrect a group of zombies to attack your group. To deal with these zombies quickly, drink from the Burning Blood Cauldron to gain the Hellfire buff. Keep in mind, however, that the Hellfire buff will also cause friendly fire to other nearby players. Healers can either save a big healing cooldown to combat this, or you can use ranged DPS to tank down the adds, while the tank alone grabs the Hellfire buff. Melee need to be careful not to get themselves killed by standing near the tank for too long during this phase. The final ability requiring the use of a cauldron is called Zanzil's Graveyard Gas. Zanzil will fill the room with toxic gas which deals 10% of a player's health as damage every second. All players will need to drink from the green cauldron of Toxic Torment. This cauldron will reduce nature damage taken by 90%. As a result, your party will only take 1% of their health as damage, making the healer's job a lot easier. The final boss, and by far the easiest, is Jindo the Godbreaker. Jindo is a two-phase fight. The first phase is fairly simple. Jindo will place a bubble on the ground that acts as an anti-magic shield that reduces magical damage taken by 90%. Jindo will cast a buff on himself called Shadows of Hakar. This ability will cause him to deal around 130,000 damage to his target and each nearby ally with every successful hit. As soon as he gains this buff, all party members, including the tank, must run inside the anti-magic zone until the buff wears off. Anyone caught outside the zone will quickly die. When Jindo reaches 50%, Phase 2 will begin. 
During this phase, all players are ported into the spirit realm. Jinda will stand behind Hakar. He will randomly cast Shadow Spikes. These Shadow Spikes are very similar to the fireballs cast by the Proto Behemoth in the Halfus encounter. Players will see a circle of blue fire on the floor that indicates where the Shadow Spikes will land. Simply move out of these circles before the spikes fall. Also during this phase, Jinda will summon groups of spirits that must be picked up by your tank and AoE'd down as quickly as possible to avoid overwhelming the group. You will notice four chains on the floor in the spirit realm. Destroying these chains will release Hakar, causing him to kill Jindo. The only way to destroy these chains is to utilize the Gurubashi troll spirits. Pull the trolls, one at a time, to a nearby chain. These trolls have a smash ability that causes them to leap at a target. When this ability is cast, it causes a ground effect that deals damage as well as increasing damage taken by 50%. This ability must hit the chain, so everyone should stack on them until the troll casts this ability. After the ability is cast, everyone should move away quickly to avoid being hit by it themselves. Continue avoiding shadow spikes, DPSing down adds, and getting the troll spirits to smash chains until all four are broken. Once the final chain is broken, Hakar will kill Jindo and the encounter will end. The whole of Zul'Gurub has a really unique design and some very interesting mechanics. Overall, it should be an adequate challenge to most players. It also contains some attractive gear that will help players focus on raid progression. Just to finish with this guide, we did not cover the Cache of Madness. The Cache consists of four optional and random bosses that can be spawned if you have a minimum of 450 archaeology skill. While these fights did not seem to pose a difficult challenge compared to the ones detailed above, we hope to post a new guide about them soon. You have now completed the main bosses of Zul'Gurub, congratulations! This was Eolond, bringing you another LOD Cataclysm Dungeon Guide. If you wish to see other guides, be sure to check both our channel and our website. Also, feel free to join our blog and participate in our discussions. Both links can be found in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching!